In this industrial strip, deep in the suburbs of Toronto, you'll find the modest offices of Coextro, an internet service provider. So is this a happy customer? It's a happy customer that's blazing speed. <laughs> <laughs> they have about 10,000 customers and seven employees. One of hundreds of small Canadian internet resellers all facing the same huge obstacle. It is a challenge, certainly competing against the uh, larger carriers. Coextro customers get their internet over the same networks as the larger carriers. Unlike the larger carriers though, every single Coextro plan comes with unlimited data. And compared to the big telcos, Coextro plans cost about half as much. And yet it is still a struggle to convince people to switch. It's, it's quite frustrating. That's the biggest challenge we have is why uh, are we not getting, uh, like I say, we're doing well, but how come we're not getting more volume? The answer? is Larry McLean. Well, not Larry specifically, but people just like him. He's been with either Rogers or Bell since the dial-up days. So when both announced earlier this month that they were raising internet prices for the second time in 15 months. What are your thoughts on that? What's, you know, they raised their price five bucks, so what can I do? I mean, I don't like it. It's probably too much. Yet he's sticking with his big telco, and the numbers suggest most others will too. Even with hundreds of smaller companies offering home internet service in Canada, with prices on average about 25% cheaper than the big guys, together Bell, Rogers, TELUS and the large incumbents still account for 87% of residential internet subscriptions in Canada. There are a lot of other third-party providers, mm -hmm. right? You're, are you aware of yep. all of those? Yep. They're all cheaper. He knows he could save money by going elsewhere, but he chooses not to. We wanted to know why he and so many other Canadians make that decision. So we asked Bryn Weingard. She studies neuroscience and psychology, and she's a professor at the Schulich School of Business. I look at the brain science of consumers and how and why they make decisions. She says there are four main reasons why consumers pass up opportunities to save money. The first is fear of change. There's a real cost to making the wrong choice, which is equated as consumer risk. And so consumers are always trying to mitigate risk by going with the one they know, the devil they know. Listen to Larry on that. I don't want to deal with the hassle of changing and then finding out that it, it's not as good. Second, trust in the establishment. Big brands drive familiarity. Familiarity drives liking, and liking drives trust and therefore purchase intent. People my age, remember Bell when Bell was the only game in town. But it's not only people his age. The numbers show young people are also going with the big companies. Third, cheaper means lower quality. There's also psychology that shows, research that shows, that if the disparity is really big, it's all the more reason to distrust the smaller guy. So if you're charging less, you're valued at less. Everything is cheap, 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 cheap. And, and when people start talking like that, it, to me, it puts me off because I know what cheap is. And the fourth reason, habit. Once we have built that habit with those consumers, that routine, they don't break it, even when they break trust, even when they break their, pre their prices, even when they hike their fees, et cetera. So really, you're a satisfied Bell customer mm -hmm. other than the price increase. Yeah, well, you know, I'm satisfied with gasoline other than the price. <laughs> Creatures of habit. Yeah, it... With little fear of losing customers, she says, there's little reason to lower prices. And get this, it's a Canadian thing. Canadians are also more value conscious, less price sensitive compared to Americans. So we see Americans much more sensitive on price and Canadians will pay. Uh, and so what we see from Canadians is that they will put their money toward, you know, toward things they value or that they perceive value in. There are other reasons, of course, why people don't choose smaller companies, not least because many people haven't heard of them. Coextro has no advertising budget. They get most of their customers via word of mouth. So there's the fiber line. Yeah, fiber line coming in right here. They're also building their own fiber optic network, slowly but surely trying to gain customers in what is an uphill battle. Because in a business where the large corporations hold nearly 90% of the market, this small company's biggest hurdle might just be Canadian consumers themselves. Aaron Saltzman, CBC News, Toronto.
so Canadian. Canadians may value perceived quality over cost, but are not above complaining about the bill. So how do prices stack up to those in other developed countries? Check this out. Canadians pay a lot, but not the most, for the average high-speed internet service, about 65 bucks a month. People in Japan and Australia pay moderately more, about $68, $70 respectively. But look at the U.S. The average bill there is almost $100 a month. That's roughly twice what's paid in much of Western Europe.